But first, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky will deliver a virtual address to Congress Wednesday. Zelensky is asking the U.S. for more support in defending his country from Russia, including requests for more weapons and, crucially, for fighter jets. The meeting with Congress comes as Russian forces continue to escalate their bombardment of Ukraine. At least two people were killed Monday when airstrikes hit a residential building in the capital, Kyiv. President Zelensky's office also said there were attacks in Kharkiv, as well as explosions in the port city of Kherson. Over the weekend, Russia targeted a military base in western Ukraine less than 15 miles from the border with Poland. For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen. We know that Russia has been targeting these military bases around three in the last several days. What do we know about some of these specific targets? Yes, that's some significant developments. Let's take it over to the map over here to give the people a better idea of just exactly what happened. Let's start with the attack over the weekend at this military base, which is marked with this little icon near the Polish border and just west of the Ukrainian city of Lviv. This base was being used as a training facility. The, govern the governor there reported that at least 35 people were killed. There was also an attack not too far away at the Lutsk military airfield. That's just in this region right here. That killed two and wounded six. Now, this is the latest example of how Russia has been ramping up its aggression of its attacks in recent days. But there are more and more reports, alarming reports, of civilians being hit as well. In this region right here, Russian troops have made significant advances and carried out heavy bombardment of the area. And what you're seeing in this region is Russian troops are taking over parts of the coastline of the Black Sea, shown right here, and the area in nearby Crimea, which was annexed from, by Russia rather in 2014. Now, the goal here is to make a land bridge from this region here up into the east, where there have been Russian-backed separatists that have been taking on a conflict since 2014. And by claiming control of the port cities, military experts say Russia is aiming to disrupt supply chains with Ukraine, something that could impact the Ukrainian military and civilians throughout the country, Seth. Yeah, controlling those ports, those port cities, the Black Sea, that coastline is certainly crucial for, for Russia. We've seen those airstrikes, the bombardment there in, in Mariupol, the city in the south there. Uh, we also are hearing reports about uh, civilians who are caught, food running low, out of power. What do we know about evacuation efforts? Yeah, the images coming out of Mariupol are absolutely devastating to look at. We're seeing a rapidly deteriorating humanitarian situation in that city. It's a key port city right over here. And it's in Ukraine that it's Rather, it's effectively surrounded by Russian forces. Uh, the city council there says they are running out of their last reserves of food and water. They're also reporting that Russian forces have blockaded the city and are continuing to shell non-military targets. Now, a blockade is important because it's crippling for the growing number of people who are injured and in need of basic supplies like medicine. And escaping this situation, Seth, has been incredibly difficult to do. But the city council there is reporting that more than 160 private cars managed to leave the city, and that would be the first successful evacuation since the city was encircled by Russian troops more than two weeks ago. Ah, good news. You, I'm struck by these stories of these mayors who were doing municipal functions a few weeks ago, and now they're managing evacuations in, in, in a war zone. It's just uh, remarkable. We know that Russia, the talks between Russia and Ukraine are set to continue tomorrow. What do we know about what Ukraine is asking for, and is there any hope for any sort of agreement? Yeah, well, it's certainly a delicate dance here, and the stakes couldn't be higher. The two sides had expressed some optimism in the past few days. President Zelensky's aide tweeted that negotiators would discuss peace, ceasefire, immediate withdrawal of troops, and security guarantees. So there is some very cautious optimism and what would appear to be a lot of ground to cover before the fighting stops. Yeah. Seth. Hard to be too optimistic looking at those pictures coming out of Ukraine. Tom Hansen, thanks so much for joining us.